All right, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Wagon. Uh, I'm Andrew. I'm here with Joe. Uh, we're here to break down another uh, <laughs> pathetic, I don't know what the word is to describe this one, uh, performance by our beloved Philadelphia Eagles. We didn't lose today. We tied 23-23 20, to 23 to the Cincinnati Bengals. It sure felt like a loss. It's not sugar-coated. First off, Joe, well, how you doing today? Uh, would be better if the Eagles were able to pull this out, but you know, my main man, Miles Sanders, still at above 90 yards, so you know, good vibes going his way still, so I appreciate it. At least he's consistent. We have someone consistent, you know. Yeah, we, to have that. yeah we, can, we can break that down in a little bit, whether... Oh, and Greg Ward. Security blanket Greg Ward since he's been up from the practice squad. 72 yards. Uh, dude that just knows how to catch the football, does everything, just keeps the game simple. Uh, you got to like having a couple guys like that on your team. And then Ertz had a very good game. So just to start with a little bit of positivity. Yeah, uh, absolutely. A little, a little positivity and probably the only positivity. Uh, maybe a couple other things here and there. Um, well, let's just start. Let's first, let's, let's start with, before I get into mine, let's start with what was your biggest issue today? coming out of this game and not necessarily don't have to single out one guy if you want to go for it, but just overall in terms of the team, what was the biggest issue today? Well, in the second game, our O-line improved from the first game and this game, they completely fell off a cliff from the second game. And for that matter, played probably as bad, if not worse than the first game. Um, but the, the um, other issue is, Wentz had a couple open throws that he missed again. You can tell there was a difference effect there where the Bengals had a quarterback that was playing with a lot of swagger and confidence because he's come in in the first three games of his career and kept his teams in game, even though they lost and then tied, um, which I think is the second time the Eagles have tied the Bengals. But yep, they tied when Don McNabb was here because he forgot that you could go in overtime. <laughs> yeah, he forgot you could tie. Um, but it's disappointing, but, I mean, you could tell Burrow was playing with that swagger and confidence, and Wentz is still kind of playing conservative and tentatively because they pointed out the one play on the broadcast, which uh, proves us exactly where he had somebody wide open. I can't remember who was wide open. Oh, Jackson, maybe when he – not Jackson, because Jackson was – It was Miles Sanders. Was it was Sanders, it Sanders because somebody – wa- Yeah. It was a yeah, wheel so, route. If they would have dropped a dime to Sanders, it would have been a touchdown. But he it was that one, up. but I'm talking about in the uh, red zone when he had that slant and he ran. When they said right now it was open, if he just zipped it across the uh, – Oh, court, it would I have had that was blanket Ward. That was Ward? Yeah, because he missed that and for some reason ran up the middle and just dove. See, on Where, that, don't get me wrong, he should have made that throw. Yes, absolutely. But I think that's – in part due to the lack of line. I think throughout that game, he was so used to having to get out of there quickly and with all the, but that's obviously a play though. It's not like that's a slow developing play. It was a, slow I know, but he had to move around so much. Like he didn't have time to even find that. Like, um, but the other I, play, I, I agree with you. I, I have to, I have to rewatch it to see if he had time to actually see, see that. Cause I, I don't remember how the line was on that play. I, well, the I only mean, reason we, I say that is because I saw the replay. Like, well, I remember I, them showing the replay. Yeah. I just can't remember exactly. And then the other play, I completely agree. You can't just miss a guy that's wide open on a – like, you could have made that. Th- there's a couple throws uh, he missed that has to be made. But, of course, he looks solid in the rushing game, so maybe using more RPOs is a way to go a little bit. He did have 65 yards. Um, so, I mean – at least I think that's what he had. That's what I wrote yeah. down. But uh, yeah, six, uh, right. either way, uh, he did very effective in the rushing game. My problem is uh, you had a quarterback that eight sacks in Joe Burrow and still threw for 312 and two touchdowns with no interceptions. And uh, you were and you threw for two interceptions against the Bengals defense. The, the, that's that's just an issue I've been having. Like Wentz, like Dan Orlowski always said going into this season, even when he was having off games, would not turn the ball over. The problem is now when he has off games, he does turn the ball over. 
So that's very detrimental to the team where before, even in off games, he was never detrimental because he would have like 65 rushing yards. So if you have zero turnovers or maybe one fumble, but zero interceptions, a touchdown and like 200 and like say 50 yards because you have no turnovers and you manage the game okay, that's a decent game. But having those two interceptions makes it a bad game. And it's not like you played a good defense. So it's not like you can say, oh, well, they played a defense with block. Like they have a couple good catch on their defense, but it's not like they have a great defense out there in Cincinnati. So, yeah, I think um, you raise a good point there. You got to take care of the ball. I think overall, I thought his decision making was fairly good today, if I'm being honest. I think on the interceptions, it was more of a poor throw than decision making. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but for say on the one that Ertz, the one that Ertz was, the one the Ertz was a great decision because Ertz was open. But you have to hit that throw to the sideline with the way Ertz is running, and he catches it and then runs out of bounds. But Wentz threw it behind him, which allowed the Bengals guy to make a play. So I'm okay with the decision there on who he was throwing it to. I think it was more of a poor throw. I don't know if you'd agree, but I thought his decision-making today was better than previous games. I agree completely with that, but the difference is this year he just keeps figuring out ways to struggle rather than figuring out ways like we've seen in the past to get through a game (laughs) and find ways to uh, execute where – if you're missing the throw, that's still bad. It's better than not recognizing the play, but it's still bad to miss the throw when you're supposed to become a guy that keeps getting better as his career develops, where this is the first time to start a season it looked like Carson took a step back. Like last year, we had so much issues uh, coming in, where this year you have issues, but you actually have Sanders, who's a consistent back that always gets above 90 yards, so you would think – That would help, but it's just we miss wide open throws um, down the field. He missed like three of them today. So missing throws, I guess I would rather have. I agree with your point than just blindly missing who you should read and throw it to. But it's still something that needs to be improved upon. And I think Orlowski hit it on the head. How he throws when he plants, he kind of plants sideways rather than planting directly towards the person which can affect his throws where if they if the Eagles fix that, it would probably make him more consistent. It's almost like a pitcher being a little bit off with the mechanics. Like it seems like it could be a little twitch or tweak thing, excuse me. Um, and that might help in a million miles. I, I agree with you to an extent. I, I think um I, again, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I was just saying I, I think that was something to note of today was his decision-making was a lot better than it was the first two weeks. And personally, to your point about the RPOs, as dangerous as it might be for Wentz, I think he's at his best game when you allow him to run and scramble like that rather than sticking him in the pocket. Uh, I thought today was his best. QB is all about that too. So I thought I thought today was Wentz's best game of the season, not that it's saying much. Um I honestly think that that what he did today was better than what he did the first two games. Um, Again, not that it's saying much because his first two games weren't that great as well. But I'm just saying in terms of when it's all said and done, um, I think other issues kind of took foot today along with other uh, other things. I think one important thing to note here is – to your point about the issues last year, I don't know if they're all fixed in terms of the offense and and not – to anyone's credit or not anyone's fault it's just unfortunate right now you saw peters uh get hurt towards the end of the game today i don't know if he ever came back but say he can't go next game you're missing four or five starting offensive linemen uh you came into the year with already uh you, you look at the re- you really look at the receiving corpse and i'm not trying to make excuses for wins i'm just going off these are i guess similar issues to what we had last year is i mean you look at the receiving corpse you don't have your number one or your number two wide receiver you're looking at Greg Ward. Uh, don't get me wrong. Great security blanket. Play great. But you're looking at Greg Ward as your number one guy right now. You lose Dallas Goddard. So you're down Goddard, Jackson, Jeffrey, um, Rager, your first-round draft pick you thought would be coming and, and make big plays for us. So you're down about five guys already, not including the offensive linemen. If you count them, you're down about nine, close to nine of your uh, 11 starters there on offense almost already. So you're already – I mean, again, I'm not trying to – you should have won this game yeah. no matter what. I'm just saying some of the stuff we kind of had last year is already back this year, and you're already you're only in game three of the year. 
Um, I think that the lack of production you see from your outside or your your out your backs outside of Miles Sanders has been poor. Uh, Boston Scott's got to start stepping up a little bit. Corey Clement's got to step it up a little bit. Not it's not just their fault too because they're probably getting touches, which is a whole another issue. But again, you know, I was all for Devontae Freeman. I understand why he chose the Giants because he could have got a starting spot, but the Eagles missed out in the offseason when they should have signed Freeman. Yeah. Um, you could have used him, especially in these first couple weeks, especially week one when Sanders couldn't play. So I think that's a whole other issue. Uh, I mean, th- this game was concerning. Like, this game was very concerning for me. I'm sure for you as well. I don't want to speak for you. But um, we got a lot to prove. And I won, I, I'm interested to see what your take on this. But for me watching this game, I don't know if you thought of this. Uh one thing I had issue with the receivers, not necessarily their overall, or not necessarily what they did in terms of when thrown into them, but the, their ability to extend plays and get open. Like, if you notice, when we started, when Fletcher Cox or whoever, Brandon Graham or whoever it was, started chasing Joe Burrow down, what did the Bengals receivers do? They ran around and found a way to get open and allowed, while Burrow extended plays, they got open and and, he, and then they were able to find him. It felt like whenever <clears throat> Wentz scrambles and tries to get open, no receivers ever no receivers ever get open and he ends up having to run for two yards or throws it away or does something like that. Like where are these receivers moving around trying to get open for your quarterback? Yeah. Well the uh, big difference too is uh the Bengals healthy scratch John Ross, who was gonna be their only small receiver if he came in, where they put in a bunch of guys that were above six two. So, like, to get open is against the team. They said this in the uh, broadcast, and then when I looked at it, all their guys were above 6'2 as a receivers because Olden Tate came in. It's a lot easier to get open against our secondary. We have all those toll guys, and we have one of the smaller secondaries in the league. We also have one of the smaller receiving cores in the league. So I feel like uh, that's an issue because when you have a lot of young guys that need to put on more bulk, uh, as they develop in their careers, like High Towers, uh, Burnett, and um, Ward definitely uh, is a guy that's just a very safe uh, route. But High Tower, Burnett, even Rodgers as a tight end isn't as big as you would really want a tight end to be. That's probably why he gets banged up sometimes. Um, like, you have to, th- that I think affects us a bit because you have a lot of guys you should be running consistently more slants and quick routes with kind of similar to the Patriots because you have quick, fast players in Burnett when he's in and um, Hightower. Like, those guys are not guys you should be trying to run, like, fancy routes with. They're just quick runners. You should just get try to get the ball to them on a quick slant and let them run because they're not guys that really know how to, I think, get open because it's not like they're great wide receivers. They're just – Scheme wide receivers is probably the best way to put it. You have to scheme them open. They're not guys that usually the regulars of the world are more guys that find ways to get open. Yeah, just so bring up those guys and stuff and break it down. We're gonna throw out Zach Ertz because he's a tight end. We'll throw out Dallas Scott because he's a tight end as well. Um, so why don't we, I, I want to ask you this question: the trio of Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and A.J. Green because that's their three guys. Is that better than what the Eagles threw out there? Are all three of those better than what the Eagles threw out there today? Well, you're also asking me about my favorite receiver from the draft. (laughs) And uh, Tyler Boyd, who I love. And then A.J. Green, who I never disliked. So uh, this is probably a a biased opinion towards the other team somehow. Uh, So the answer is yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously Jackson was out there to start and he goes down early, but um, I was just curious because I, I never he, really thought about it until now. You were benching all those receivers yeah. and the way we had them run the routes. And I was when I was looking at the box score here, I'm like, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and A.J. Green yeah. compared to I, Greg Ward, Hightower, Burnett, Rogers. I'm like, wait a minute. We're making fun of this Bengals team, but. Are those, res- are those receivers that they, yeah. they're throwing out there better than what the Eagles did today? Because I love uh, Rager, but I still think we should have tried to grab T. Higgins in the second, uh, trade it up, tried to get him as another guy, because we need bigger guys, like I said, that are not Alshon Jeffrey because he's aging and is, is a health concern. Like, you need guys that can get possessions and all that, where I love – Rager, but he's not he's he's can, he's not a bad possession receiver. The problem is it's not like he's a tall 
go up, grab the ball above six, six, three guy, um, like T Higgins is, that's just going to keep getting bigger as time goes on. Uh, that's why if Boyd is ever available, speaking of Tyler Boyd, the Eagles sure as hell better be one of the t- first teams to make themselves <laughs> available to getting Tyler. Boyd. Um, uh, otherwise, I would be annoyed uh, hmm. because if A.J. Green is available, I would not be that annoyed if we don't go in on him because that would be kind of getting another aging guy that you're taking a risk on. Um, so uh, that I wouldn't be too upset. Plus, I think he's not going to want to – he won't leave because he's kind of tight with – excuse me, with Burrow, it seems already. That seems to be a pretty good um, pairing forming with him, Boy Green, and then he seems to be doing r- very well with – uh. Higgins, and then I think it's Alden Tate uh, out there. So uh, he seems to just be good at spreading the ball around too. That's what uh, that's what I like to see from the Bengals. What I've liked, what I saw from the Bengals too. They spread it around to guys that are not the fanciest of names. Uh, that's why um, I still think Wentz needs to improve some because Burrow has good a better receiving core, but he still knows how to spread it around to. I can't remember that Thomas guy's uh, name, but the one his first name, but the guy that had that one catch for like nine or ten yards. Yeah, and then uh, Auden Tate, uh, Gio Bernard, uh, Boyd Higgins, uh, AJ, and then Mixon. Um, they he spreads the ball around. Um, where sometimes you just got to try to spread the ball around on not too fancy plays just to throw off the defense. Where the Eagles' playbook still is not. It was more creative today, but it's still not creative enough. Like we've seen Doug be aggressive and aggressively creative in the past. He hasn't been that this year, and I'm trying to figure out why. Especially with a team like this, the best way to have a chance to win when you have guys with athleticism and speed, um, like Hertz, Wentz, and uh, guys like Ward who plays out of his uh, you-know-what. And then um, you got Sanders. I mean you want to be smart, aggressive, and more aggressively creative because it's probably a better shot to win because you do have the injuries, like you mentioned. But we're being just very conservative, which is stupid in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I thought Doug Pearson's was questionable today. Um, and here's my thing. I, I, I said this on my podcast with my brothers and stuff. Um, I honestly, I, I don't want to see Jalen Hurts suited up another game unless Carson Wentz is hurt and they're going to – actually start Jalen Hurts. The the stuff they're doing with Hurts is just stupid right now. Um, I, I hated when they used them today. It was like the worst time. Like you, you were finally had a drive where you're moving down the field, and for whatever reason, you're finally moving down the field. Wentz is looking good, hits a couple passes, and then they pull pull Hurts and, and they fumble the ball, and you lose three yards, and it killed the drive. Like you don't don't. It's about stop. timing, don't, though. I don't. Don't think stop work. Don't, they're, they're trying to out. They're just trying to outcreate themselves at this point, and it's just stupid. Like just stick to your normal game plan. Like it, we already know it was a waste of a draft pick. Uh, again, nothing against Jalen Hurts. I think he could have been a great quarterback if he went to a, a team that would actually use him for his actual job, rather than what the Eagles are going to try to do for however long. Um, but I think. I, again, I wish him nothing but the best because I think if, again, he would have got drafted by, say, whatever team needed a quarterback at the time and they could actually develop him, it would have worked out well for him because uh, he was a great player in college, obviously. But I, I think here, I just don't I don't like what they're trying to do with him. And if Doug kind of changes his game plan with him, then I mean, I'll say otherwise. But the way they're using That's him right now, I, mean. I, I just don't like it right now, The way what they're trying to do. It, it cost him field position today. It cost him... Uh, it killed all the momentum on that drive, and it was very frustrating to see um, in that situation. And then, I mean, Doug Pierce at the end of the game in overtime was just brutal. Like, you get down in the field goal range, stop trying to make all these fancy throws, just run the ball, get a couple extra yards, take the third or fourth down, and just kick the field goal. And you try to do all these fancy plays, and you, you, you call out these passing plays, and instead of just running and being like, when the time you had to be conservative and instead of just calling a run play, getting a few yards, going out there and just taking the field goal, walking out there with the win, you're trying to make all these pass plays. Wentz tries to ex- extend the play. Then you get called for the holding. You move back 10 yards. You get out of field goal range and you cost yourself the win. And then you obviously get the ball back. And then the stupid play for a tie at the end, kick the field goal. And I think, I forget who it was. 
that got that full start on the when it was going to be a 59 yarder. But like, what are you doing there? Matt like, Pryor, I think. That's I thought. I think it was Matt Pryor as well. Which he also I think had the holding, um, on on the play on the that cost us the field the field goal the first time. That's why I, I'm pretty sure he had the holding. That's why I didn't want to say the full start as well because I couldn't remember. Uh, but like, like these are these are inexcusable mistakes. Like I, I don't care that you didn't have a preseason. Like you shouldn't be making that mistake even without a preseason. Like it's all like you know what the snap count is. It's on a field goal. It's not even like it's not even like it's an offensive play where you have all these mixed snap counts. Like uh, it was just brutal. And then to see him settle, I don't know what your reaction was, but I was dumbfounded when they tend they take the delay a game that to settle for a, uh, what we thought. Well, I mean, I thought they were still going to try the sixty four <laughs> yarder, but then they sent out the punting unit. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, because <laughs> with how well your defense is playing, you try that field goal. Worst case is the other team's got 15 seconds on the 48 yard line with how well your defense is playing. They they're out of timeouts. They're not going to do anything. Like I, I was I, this this was frustrating. Well, first um on what you said more towards the beginning there, I think it's more about picking your timing and game planning better with Hurts because the one RPO he ran worked well. He almost got the first down, so I had no pr- trouble when they ran the second RPO. Uh, he just ended up fumbling it because he probably would have got at least four yards there. It looked like he had room to pick up a couple. Um, but I don't think they mixed him in otherwise fairly well. I do think you have to keep him in, though, because you have to use every athletic guy you have with the injuries we have. You just have to play him into the lineup better. And that's on the coaching, and Doug has not been coaching good so far this year. Um, so I think he needs to step it up as well, but, um, you also need to have more guys like Greg Ward has been the great security blanket Ertz did good, but you need to now have somebody become the next Greg Ward, whoever on our receiving core is going to become the Greg Ward of this year who stepped up and really helped us last year. So then you had more than one guy because, when Ward was playing good, we usually had at least one other person or both of Goddard and Irks playing good at the same time. So, or Sanders was running really good and playing really good, where um, now Ward and Sanders are playing good. If you could get, say, a Hightower, a Burnett, um, one of those guys, or even a Rodgers as the uh, tight end that's more of a receiver than he really is a great uh, overall tight end um, that has some speed to his game. Then that would be helpful because you kind of, in my opinion, need somebody else, how they say next man up to be the next ward to step up and do big things for you. And then running back, I'm 100 percent with you on that. The Eagles might have to, if they don't get production, they're trade for a backup running back. that can mix in well with Sanders because right now it's not cutting it. You can't just uh, you don't want to run Sanders into a ground either. So you want to make sure you have a guy that mixes in well from the backfield and Scott's not doing as good as we hope. Clement, uh, unfortunately, is uh, struggling. He's coming back from his injuries, uh, which stinks, but it's just how it is. They need to figure something out there as well. You're spot on with um, that. But I would say O-line is obviously, if they're going to trade for something, what they should focus on before running back. But uh, if there's a running back um, available, then they might want to focus on a, one, a guy that's contracts expiring, somebody like that, um, to have behind Sanders because you really do have a gap there when a lot of teams now do have two pretty solid uh, running backs. Whether they have a star as their first guy or not, they usually tend to use a second guy pretty good nowadays. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Eagles Especially don't have like versatility, said, an, ex- really. an expired back would be good, and that's why, honestly, I would have just resign Jordan Howard if I was them. But um, yeah, moving on, yeah. I think the last point here is we're getting close to 25 minutes. Um, I guess what overall is your takeaway from the defense today? Me personally, I thought, honestly, they, they played well. Uh, 23 points isn't bad. Uh, you get the two turnovers there, kind of turned over the field, put them in a couple tough spots. I thought their, their, one, um, their one big breakdown was that Nate Gary – play in the end zone for that wide open touchdown, which kind of stinks because on my other podcast, I gave him a lot of credit for how well he was playing up until that point. And then he came out and had a bad day today. But I guess everybody has those days. Um, I, my one here, my one issue here before I turn it over to you is, and I understand offense has to be better, not they got got to take care of the ball. 
But through three games, you don't have one takeaway, uh, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I, that's something I'd like to see change in these next this next game. Yeah. I mean, the Eagles' defense improved. Um, I think, obviously, we still left a couple guys, uh, like you said, get open, and we let uh, Burrow run around. I mean, Burrow's very talented, as we've all come to see in these first three games of his career. But we've let him run around to create the plays, as you uh, alluded to earlier, that guys were able to run open, uh, uncomparable to how our team guys haven't been able to run open, unless if you're Greg Ward. Um, so I think they played better or there's still some holes that need to be fixed. Yeah. I also think one guy that, uh, stepped in a uh, pretty good, uh, in his first game back in the NFL after some injuries that derailed his career from the Chargers was Trevor Will- Williams looked pretty okay out there. Um, and it was good for him to see him back uh, from a practice squad since he was a guy that looked like he had a chance to be a pretty good secondary uh, player and then got injured there and then ended up here. Maybe he can have a Patrick Robinson-esque uh, resurrection yeah. with the Eagles because that would be great. Uh, that would be like a that backflip worthy potentially, you know. Uh, so uh, I think, yeah. I really like to see uh, guys like that come back do well. Nikel Roby Coleman has impressed me and pissed me off. So um, we'll see where that goes uh, as time goes on. Uh, still got the one of the greatest names in the game going for him, but you know that only that only takes you so far. Um, but we'll see what happens there. I just think they. I agree with you. This was their best game, but do they still need to improve more? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. Um, I think their D line saved them today too, because our D line played really well, which made our secondary look better in my opinion. Because when Slay was out too, we particularly uh, really kind of upped the ante and got some good rushes when he was out for a couple plays. Um, I think our D line having those eight sacks and uh, more QB pressures than the Bengals really did help. Um, the secondary today as well. I don't know if you agree with that or not. That's just something I saw. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think it's um, I don't know. I I think it's pretty telling that it's something we're seeing, and I think it's something. And I, and I agree with you. I think uh, it was probably their best game of the season, and there always is room for improvement. And I mean, especially when you can't beat a team like that, I think it's pretty telling that there is room for improvement. The one that bugged me was that third and 15 I mean it looked like the Bengals were just giving us the, that fourth down they were just trying to get a screen gain a couple yards and then all of a sudden the guy breaks three tackles and was straight through the middle and I, I always listen to Merrill Reese I think that he does a fantastic job so I had him on and he brought up the point the defense originally did a great job because what you don't want is him to break to the outside and get around everybody they kept him in the middle where you want to keep him but, but nobody somehow, went to the middle yeah, to tap so, yeah. Somehow they just let him go straight down the middle. And that was a pivotal yeah. part in the game at the time. But the uh, issue no. was nobody went to the middle to tackle him. Everybody yeah. just stayed to the outside, <laughs> and nobody went to the middle to tackle him. Giovanni Bernard, who that's the only really effective part of his game, is catching a ball in an open field and just running through that open field. Yeah. But. No, I agree with you 100%. I don't know if you have anything else here before I uh, close this out. Uh, one thing I got is don't forget, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe to the channel here. Like us, give us comments, give us feedback, whatever you want to do to help us improve. We're always here to, to provide you the best content as we can. Uh, not, again, heartbreaking game for, their, uh, for the Eagles. I almost said Phillies because they, they had a tough game as well. <laughs> uh, heartbreaking game for the Eagles. We'll get uh, there tomorrow Yeah, you need in a- our season recap here. Right. Needed a win today. You come out with a tie, which I guess is a better than a loss. Everybody else in the East lost, so you're only a half game back, I guess, if you want to look at division standings. Uh, the NFC, NFC East as a whole is now 2-9-1. and one. So uh, shout-out to the NFC East again for probably going to be one of the, probably the worst division once again. Because uh, theoretically, I mean, honestly, the Cowboys should be 0-3 uh, if they didn't get lucky last week with their comeback. So theoretically, you could... You could easily be two, and honestly, the Eagles could have lost today too. So you theoretically could be like almost two and eleven as as division as whole if you if the Cowboys don't come back and the Eagles, I guess 
they technically came back in this one um so they scored late to tie to send it in overtime so they don't come back in this one uh but yeah real game uh yeah like joe just mentioned we'll do our phillies tomorrow so check out that phillies recap tomorrow probably evening uh to late night would be my guess um but yeah thanks for listening joe do you got anything else before we head out of here no, nah, I was going to say, if we have time, we'll probably try to do a preview since we're Sunday night football next week uh, for um, Eagles and 49ers. Uh, that makes me feel very warm and fuzzy inside playing the 49ers right now, uh, even with their backup with how we're playing consist- great consistent football right now. Uh, obviously, that's sarcasm. Um, but maybe we can do a preview for that. If not, if one of us find time, uh, we'll do a preview. But everyone have a great and safe start to your uh, week and um, enjoy the uh, Monday night football game tomorrow. It's going to be a very good one. Absolutely. Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Yeah, check that out. It's going to be some pretty good football uh, along with baseball playoffs starting this week. So a lot of, a lot of stuff in sports, including the wrap up of the Stanley cup finals will be this week at some point, whether it's in game six or game seven, and then uh, NBA Finals will be here around the corner. So a lot of sports to keep following, and we'll, we'll continue to provide you as much content as possible. But uh, as Joe mentioned, have a good Monday. At least try to, because we all know how rough they are after games like that. But for Joe and Andrew, another episode of Wentz Wagon. Have a great night. Have a great week, everyone. And we'll catch you guys next week with the next episode of Wentz Wagon. <laughs>